Have you ever had drift issues? Flying your quad, trying to keep it nice and steady, and you just, the nose maybe drifts off to the left or to the right, or it might have a slight roll or pitch that you're not commanding. Today we're gonna to talk about that and how you can fix that, and you might be surprised on where you need to look. It's probably not your filters, it's probably not your pit tune, it's probably not your quad at all, it's probably your radio. Oh, and I want to add, you may want to proactively check this on your radio, even if you don't notice you have drift. The only reason I probably noticed this, because I think this has been going on for a while, is because I was using iNav and altitude hold mode, so I was really trying not to touch the sticks at all. But if I was doing freestyle flying, I might, you might not notice it uh, right away because you're always moving the sticks and moving your fingers. So, you know, is it that important? I think so still because it's kind of throwing you off a little bit where you always have this constant drift you're compensating for subconsciously you don't even know about. So you may have the issue and you might not even know it. So I would check it out. So if you are having a drift issue, the first thing you want to check out is your radio. And what you want to do is turn it on and off a bunch of times. So here I have an FR Sky QX7 Radio Access Edition. So it's the newer edition. And this has the Hall Effect fancy gimbals on it as well. And what you can do is, the first thing you can do is go into your screen here and hit the page button a couple times. And then you can go to this page right here. And then you can see your roll, pitch, and yaw right here. And what you want to do is make sure that these numbers are near zero. Now, if they're not near zero, that is what you need to do first. And you probably already had this done. But just to cover our basis here, we can go into the model settings, go to the page, go over to page seven, and then we can come down here. And you can see that the reason that's not near zero is because this is reading 1513, and it really needs to be 1500. So we can go into the yaw on that specific one. You can see I have these little sub trim settings here, and I can change that sub trim. So I can go to hit, hit edit here, and then go down to sub trim, and then change that and reduce that, or increase that to the negative to bring this right down to 1500. So right around 4.4, it seems like it's doing the trick right now. So I hit escape on that. And then if I go back to that screen that I was at, now you can see that zero, of course, throttle's not at zero because we don't have that at zero position. And all is well um, in this area now. So we should be in good shape. Right, and that's probably what you had set up to begin with and assumed that you were in great shape. But you wanna keep an eye on this if you're having yaw issues. For example, if I turn this radio off and then turn this radio back on, you're gonna see I have my issue again. I just fixed this and now I have to adjust this again. So of course I can go back in and go to that same page and then adjust the sub trim. But trust me, I've done this many a time and no matter what I do whenever I turn the radio off and then turn the radio back on it is going to have a different sub trim setting that it's going to need so yes every time I turn this radio on I could do that but ultimately the issue is there's something wrong with this gimbal now one of the things you do want to check here is that your spring tension is strong enough and if you can see in here and it's hard to relay that on camera but if you look just like where that little crack is there on the on the camera you can see that i have enough spring sub tension here like it's tensioned enough it is just that and there's a fair bit of tension right here especially yeah there's definitely a fair bit of tension here it's centering it's just that the gimbal i don't know uh has some dirt in it or whatnot and it's not reading the same center and every time i turn the radio off and back on uh, yeah it's gonna have that issue as you can see here again, turning this back on, I've been through this about 20 times on this radio. Again, this is off again. And obviously that's gonna induce a yaw. So the first thing you wanna do if you're having this issue is you're gonna wanna take the back cover off your radio. And I've done that here and you can see it's fairly simple and it's gonna, mileage may vary on your radio and how you need to do that to take the back cover off. I would just look for it online. The QX7, there's just, four screws you have to take off the battery cover and four screws very easy pops off the back piece of cake and just unplug the battery once you have that unplugged what you're going to want to do is locate where that that hall effect sensor is so you can see here this is my throttle gimbal right here and that hall effect sense sensor is right here now once you locate that what you want to do is take some compressed air or just 
blowing it yourself. So I was literally just taking this thing up here and <laughs> blowing through it like that. So just blow a bunch of air through those gaps and you can kind of see it right here. There's some holes in the back here so you can blow air through that way and blow air through the front and just really blow it out. If you have some compressed air or air a compre little air compressor or something, that's probably the best way. And while you're at it, you might as well blow out the other ones as well. If you have dirt in one, there's other ones here on, on all the different axes. Here's the throttle one as well. And just blow them all out. And now after doing that on this specific radio, I don't have that issue anymore. Now when I turn this on, this stays, there's a little bit in there, but it stays fairly reasonable. If I go into the models and then go into the different settings here and go to page seven, and I can see I go down to y'all and I'm, I'm right at 1500. I've turned this on and off a bunch of times and it, we're in good shape now. So most likely that is your fix to blow it out. But if it doesn't fix it for you, here are some other things you can do as well. Now one thing you can do is go into your model settings. So you hold down the uh, menu button here and then I'm gonna go over and hold long press to go back through the pages and you can go ahead and recalibrate your sticks. And it's fairly straightforward. You just click on recalibrate, you hit start. We move this to the center here and we're really trying to look what the what we think the center of the throttle is and then hit okay. Now you move your pots and sticks to all the extents lightly and go through that motion and then move the pots up top here move these of course get that recentered in the detent get this recentered here as well and then uh, once i'm done just hit enter now it's going to take me back through it again so i don't want to do it again so i'm going to go ahead and hit uh, escape here to get back out of this now at this point so that will recalibrate your sticks but I'm willing to bet that's not the issue. Something you can do to make it a little better is you can go and a lot of times we have the ADC filter turned off nowadays for optimum, you know, stick feel and feed forward and beta flight. So you can go ahead and turn that ADC filter back on. That in my experience will make it better, but it's not the end all be all to solve the issue. Now the other thing you can do is go into the firmware and you can see that beta flight and iNav both have RC dead band and they have it separated out for yaw versus pitch and roll. So you can see we have a roll pitch dead band right here set of five, but I can set this to yaw. Now what I'm getting on a spread is pretty big. Like this would need to be like 30, which is quite a bit of dead band, maybe 20, maybe 15. I have to go back and forth and just turn the radio on and off a bunch of times to see. But that is one thing you could do is just crank that dead band up and that is gonna give you a, a gap on either side of the 1500 mark of where it won't uh, recognize an RC input. Same thing will happen here on beta flight. You have the RC dead band right here, and then you can see there's the yaw dead band that's separate to that. Uh, you even have one for uh, 3D flying if you do that and you have a throttle stick thing, but that's that that wouldn't be, you know, that's, that's likely something else. Now using dead band in that way will give you some kind of dead zone in the middle of your stick. So again, it's more of a cover up. It's not really a fix, but you can give it a shot. You might not even notice. And then if you do notice and it's bothering you, then you can look to shell out the extra money to get another gimbal. So hopefully this helps fix your issue. Please do let me know if you've had this issue down in the comments and have resolved it through this method or other methods. I'd be really interested in knowing that. This was throwing me off for a while. I thought it was something with iNav, honestly. And I was looking and looking and looking and then I finally looked at my radio and I was like, wait, that's why it's doing it. Cause randomly when I'm turning my radio on, it's not centering that yaw stick. That's why I'm having this yaw drift. You can actually see it in some of my iNav tuning videos. The one specifically for altitude hold tuning, I thought there was it's just something wrong with the firmware. It's not the firmware, it was my transmitter. If you did find this helpful, can I remind you, I do have a Patreon. Thanks everybody and I'll see you in the next one.